All right, this is the continuation of uh, building the power brake setup. This is the brake pedal bracket here. Turned out good. See, I plated it here, reinforced the side. Plenty strong enough, put a gusset there. I'm feeling much better tomorrow, going back to work. Last full day, besides weekends, of course to be working on this. I really have finished a lot of things that I wanted to get done. Um, I think I made good use of my time. So you can see that plate is done. You can buy one of those on eBay for like 400 bucks, really overpriced piece. I built that for about 20 bucks worth of materials and the bolts and welding rod and stuff paint um so yeah saving money that's what hot rodding is all about so that it's good to go i'm gonna stick the booster on there and bolt that piece to the back of it so i can start building my brake pedal all right the pedal is done i didn't film me building it because my videos are getting way too long i gotta shorten them up but you can see I kind of had to piece it together. Um, I ground some of the welds down but left most of it so that it wouldn't uh, get rid of the rigidity. And once I put the pad back, back on, you won't even be able to tell. That's the pivot point and then that's where the linkage bolts to. All right, I got the pedal installed. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like up in there. I'm gonna put some Loctite on the, the bolts here. I double nutted that one. Well, works real nice. It's a little bit high, a little on the high side, but it's gonna be just fine. Gas pedal is gonna be kinda a little further in like this, so really no big deal just a little just a little higher than original but it's kind of the way it's got to be because it swings down and when it's all the way pressed in there's about uh, an inch and a half from the floorboard so enough for the carpet but so yeah I'm happy with it All right, it is Sunday morning. I picked up this heater. I kind of had to. It was 14 degrees Friday night, so it was really cold. Even my pipes froze up a little bit. So I got to insulate some of the pipes in my house. And I used this to kind of thaw them out. It worked really good. And it works really good in here, too. Heats this place up, even though. There isn't any insulation. I just gotta keep it running. If I shut it off, it'll get cold. And then I just got my high performance spark plug wires in the mail. Same ones I got on the Chevy. I haven't had any issues with them. What else? I got a starter in that box there. I got a lot of odds and ends in here. My uh, vacuum hose for my modulator. Um, I got uh, my battery cables for the starter and stuff like that. There's the hose for my booster. All these odds and ends that take a lot of time to do. Now here's what I'm going to do with the uh, transmission modulator. Get this cover off. You can see that little cap right there. What I got to do is grind off, sand off the uh, little cross thing on it drill a hole in the center and JB weld a uh, brass fitting in there with the nipple for the quarter inch uh, vacuum line. That's a good spot right there for vacuum. Um, on the other side there's already one for the booster. Right there. So 
that goes right over here easy and master cylinders on I'm probably gonna get a new one but I got it up for you know mocking purposes mock-up purposes I need a proportioning valve because I am gonna be converting to disc brakes in the front brakes are a high priority item on my agenda so I'm gonna do discs in the front and I gotta run all the lines I got done ripping all the old brake lines out I'm not really not even really sure how the old brake system worked had some odd things I didn't even know what they are so I'm gonna start fresh something I'm familiar with this is a 1972 uh, Chevy truck brake booster now here's the cool thing I'll show you guys this gets me a little excited got my radiator in the mail uh, this is from Eastwood it's a new design it's a triple pass radiator um, basically uh, it comes in flows across goes down there's a something to block it off there and it comes back across and it goes back that way so it passes three times and it's a three core radiator as well um, but I got I picked that up it's about hundred and eighty bucks seems like a really good deal um, really really good reviews on this radiator now I can't speak from personal experience I haven't run it yet but I think it's gonna be perfect and it looks like it's gonna fit just right in there I need to trim maybe about a half an inch off of this mounting bracket and here's the best part about this radiator if you look over there it has a port for the steam the steam vent so that it that's gonna save a lot of work right there all right I got the radiator installed I'm very happy with how it turned out it was very easy to put in there I didn't even have to trim the bracket on this side I got three bolts going through and the other side I just had to trim that bottom corner right there to clear the battery tray got three bolts on this side too and I also got my transmission cooler installed right there I got it facing this way so the lines will go out the bottom and probably along the cross member there under the engine sort of that'll be a nice direct route just gotta have like a little small piece of hose and the rest of it will be hard line. Oh, that feels good right there. That thing's loud, but it works really well. All right guys, it's the day after Christmas. Sorry about the loud heater, but it's nice and warm in here, so can't complain about that. I finally got my uh, things I ordered a while ago, these uh, ends. I don't need the whole thing, but it was cheaper to buy the whole assembly than just the plastic piece, and I thought I'd, you know, be good to have a spare anyway, maybe for my next build, or if I ever need to replace one on one of my current vehicles. Um, so I need to put these plastic pieces on my connectors here red and blue this is a red blue it's a 2002 computer my other truck my uh, my Chevy that's a blue green a 2003 and I also I'm getting a little fancy here and I got little uh, caps to put in uh, the blank holes that I'm not using I got a deep pin a couple more wires working on the original wiring harness here and trying to figure out what I need and what I don't. Um, this right here is from the generator. I'm gonna do away with that, I can get that right off. This is for my headlights and turn signals, that stays. This is a horn relay, that stays. This is the generator thing. Uh, can't think of it right now, a voltage regulator. Um, I could get rid of that. I can get rid of this um, uh, block right here. Do away with that. The only thing I need is a starter relay and the horn relay. 
All right, I got the gaskets on. I got all the little caps in there. Looks a lot nicer than filling them, filling the holes with silicone like I did on my last swap. That's cool. Anyway, I'm ready to bolt these in and start working on that wiring. All right, I got my original headlight and turn signal harness and horn harness all wired up. Got some new loom on it. I used the original uh, hold down piece here. That's the old loom. Is Well, actually, it's just tape, but got rid of that. And I gotta clamp this up here, but I'm kind of waiting until I get my main power supply to the engine harness looped around here so I can clamp them together. Got those wired up, and I just realized that how these connectors actually work. It's just a, a um, spade, quarter inch spade fitting, or uh, whatever, terminal on there. It slides in so that's kind of handy all of them are like that I replaced the horn one because it was old and brittle and the horns worked last time I checked so they should still work I got those bolted back on and that's about it hey guys what is up it's about time for an update it is December 30th and We've got a long weekend up ahead, so I'm gonna be working on this probably most of the weekend. Got a lot of wiring to figure out. I decided I'm going to completely forget about trying to make the factory wiring work because apparently the starter relay isn't working. And you can't buy one of those. Uh, it's kind of one-off thing for the Buick, I guess. It's a weird starter solenoid I don't really know much about it I guess you can use you can rig up like a horn relay like this one make it work but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna use a regular newer style relay like one of these and wire up a horn button like that right there I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it on the floor or hide it up under the dash not sure what I'm gonna do yet but of course it's gonna be key on only so it's only gonna work when the key is turned okay it's now um, New Year's Eve out here tinkering around I got my bracket made up for my starter button that's just a generic starter button I got a tractor supply and pretty good quality it was like I don't know, 10 bucks or something like that. And that's gonna go under the dash. Probably gonna put it like on this side. And there's my starter relay. I already got the ground done right there. And I got my fuses on. This one is for the engine harness this one's for the car so I got a fuse for each one of those my two wires here car engine I'll probably put some loom on that later on just trying to clean things up a little bit got rid of some of the original starter wiring harness I gotta cut this wire off and tuck it in somewhere that's no longer going to be used. Okay, it's January 1st, 2021. And I'm sure this video is getting a little on the long side. I like to try to keep them under 10, 15 minutes. But sometimes I go over that. Anyway, I got my battery buttoned up here. I got my um, engine power and my car power. And they're both fused right here. Got a 25 amp fuse. So that's looking good. I got everything loomed up. I'm pretty uh, picky when it comes to wiring. I like it to look nice. And I got my starter relay here. And it all works. I just tried it out. 
and um, it's kind of cool to, you know, hear a little some kind of life, even if it's just turning the engine over. Um, got all the original wiring loomed up, looking pretty good, and really coming together now. Not a whole lot of wiring left to do other than the fan. Uh, I got to put a speed sensor in it and wire up an OBD2 port and an engine light, and that's really about it. Right now, I'm working on putting the headers in. I had a little issue here where the collector was hitting the transmission. This is a heavy duty Turbo 400, the heavy duty version that was in like the one ton trucks. And it has a really long ear, so I had to cut that off. I hate doing that stuff, but sometimes you gotta do it. Not really a big deal. It's not a structural part of the transmission at all. Um, I was able to, well, I can't really see it on the camera. It must be covered up in dirt, but I was able to keep the hole for the dust cover so I can mount that on. And there's a starter all wired up. I ran the wiring under the engine, zip tied it up really good on the cross member so it doesn't rub on the uh, suspension. And I zip tied it up right there as well with uh, plenty of loom to protect it from getting rubbed through. And then that runs around here, up along there, to that junction box where it goes to the, it has the fusible link to the alternator and then the other cable that comes to the battery here. So. I think the headers will fit now. I did have to do a little bit of bashing too. Just a little bit. That's not bad. Um, because of this thing right here on the engine, I even had to grind that a little bit too. Um, they must not have took that into consideration when they built the headers. But that's no big deal. For some reason the other side clears everything clears on the other side so it's just this side I had to mess around with once I get these headers mounted I'll be able to start building the exhaust all right I got both the headers installed I was actually wrong I did have to do a little bit of clearancing on this one down in there where that ear is can't see it but I had to do a little bit of hammering but not too bad and I checked the Steering box that fits in there good. I don't have to do any clearancing for that, so I was pretty happy about that. I did have to take the master cylinder off because the steering pump's got to drop in from the top where the steering box. This side's in as well. I already started mocking up the exhaust, slid that pipe over. And that's gonna go right out of the hole in the frame. There's a hole right there, so I'm aiming it through there. My muffler's gonna be in that area, and then it's gonna turn down and come out the side. You can see the rust at the bottom of the rockers. This is a perfect car for what I'm doing. Everybody thinks it's perfect, but it does have Bondo and stuff. It is a really good car, don't get me wrong. I mean, most of these things are in really bad shape when you find them. It is a really good car, but it's not pristine. It's not like so good that you want to just keep it in a museum like all these people think that watch my channel. Well, I shouldn't say all these people. These random people that just hop on and don't understand what I do with the cars. Uh, they, they're just like, oh, I'll keep it 100% original and park it inside and, and whatever. But that's not really what I do. I like to drive cars. I take care of them, you know, I'm gonna clear coat the whole thing so it doesn't rust or and stuff and probably replace some of the weather stripping and I probably will eventually keep it indoors when I have the um, room to do so. So I, I do take care of my stuff, but I don't put five miles on it every year. I rack up the miles. I'm not, I don't build these cars to resell. I build these cars for me to 
to do what I want to do, drive them, take them to shows, enjoy them. I don't flip cars. I That's not what I do. I build them for me. And people on YouTube don't seem to understand that. But that's the reality of it. So anyway, enough of that. I'm going to start mocking up the exhaust and try to get the first section of it done which is going to have this piece this is from the original exhaust on the car it's still solid so I don't think it's original it's obviously been replaced in the past but um, this is going to clamp on to this part right here the reason I got to have a joint there is because I got to be able to take it apart to get it out of where it goes through, through the frame. Otherwise, I just weld it all in one piece, but I got to have one joint there and the rest of it's going to be one piece and I'm going to have one hanger per side. And these are my turnouts. Goes to three inch just to look cool. All right, guys, it's the end of the day. It took me a really long time to build these, but I got the first part of the exhaust done. I go down and come right past that hole in the frame where the exhaust go, original exhaust went through so the hard part's done now I just gotta build the rest of the exhaust and it should be pretty smooth sailing from this point alright I got the exhaust installed like the way it turned out tucks up in the frame then it kinda angles down and comes out so it's gonna work out really good I think it's probably gonna be pretty loud and droney but it's alright anyway I think I'm gonna end this video now it's been way too long so I did find a barb fitting for the radiator for my steam vent and now I can put the dipstick in now that the header is installed so a lot of you know tying up little things here and there I gotta get, gotta get my electric fan put that on and finish up the cooling system and when that's done I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the power steering pump or the box I mean and then the fuel system and then the drive shaft then I could pretty much that's pretty much it to sum things up um, but still a lot of work to do but I think I'm more than halfway there for sure so stay tuned and hit subscribe if you aren't already if you want to and I'll see you in the next one